Hey guys, Joe Pye here, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Welcome back to my shop. Today is the day after Thanksgiving 2024. Making a video to help you take your setup, your approach to milling apart on a vise to maybe the next level. And these two things are, are so important, but they're so simple and they're so primitive that you would never even think about it. But it does make a huge difference when you're chasing your tail trying to figure out I'm doing everything right, but I'm not getting the results that I want. So there are two things that I'm going to show you today. Uh, loading your part in your vise. Seems simple, right? Everybody just puts part in, locks it down. And parallels. Simple. Put parallels under it, close it up. First half of this video starts on my bench right here. I'm going to show you the philosophy behind the parallel environment and why does it matter. And then I'm going to show you how to load a part in a vise. That's something you may not have thought about, okay? So let's stop yakking and get to it. Right here, let's go. Very simple mistake that I see a lot of people make. Let's assume that these are parallels and not jaws. I chose a nice thick demonstration piece to show you what can happen when a parallel decides to take a walk. When you open and close a vise, sometimes the back parallel will go with the vise or fall out of place and you can see watch the top of the part when that parallel goes out of place it then becomes a non parallel because it becomes longer across the corners than it is across the flats very important tip guys put something in between those parallels keep those parallels parallel and functioning like you think they're going to function if one happens to get kicked like I said there goes the part Okay, simple. Make this a part of your every time you set your machine up with parallels, you put a spring in between it. Could be a coil spring, could be a piece of band stock bent up like a spring. Use a spring. Don't forget it. Do it every time. All right, let's go over to the actual mill. Take a look at the vise and see how important it is to know what's going on with the vise. Do that. It's important. Okay, here come the parallels. Let's talk about the spring placement just for a second here before we get into the meat and potatoes of this. I have a tool bit, the big registration parallels, some spacer parallels, and watch this parallel move when the vise opens and closes. All right? Not a problem. It stays with the movable vise, movable jaw, when you put the spring on the other side. Now, I do this quite often. Knowing that I have a parallel stack of components here for these parallels. Why is this any different? Well, I mean, aside from it being closer together, when the movable jaw moves, that parallel does not move. Okay, so spring placement might come into play with your setup. Maybe not. This is also a handy setup if you have a part with an elbow or a lip on it. You can still register where you want to register and have space for or that other feature to go down in there. All right, now here comes the reason for this particular video. I see this more than I care to see it. And I'm hoping that you will incorporate this as part of your everyday and just don't do it because it's really a poor shop practice. If you have a part that you want to mill the end of, okay, you're squaring up a block, machining 101. Let's run a cutter down the end of the block. If that part that you have in there does not extend beyond the center line of that vise, you risk cocking the back jaw this way or that way, depending on how tight your vise is. This will result in a condition on the end of the part where the end of the part is no longer square. And I will illustrate this perfectly clear here in about five seconds. So hang in there. If the part is not long enough to reach the center of the vise, you're going to have to use something on the opposite side. If you just watched the video I made for the uh, Allura's tool post extender, you saw me mill off one end of this particular block, as a matter of fact, and then I cut it off and I had a block with one square end. Not for nothing, but for the time it takes, you might as well just square up both ends of a piece of stock like this and put a mark on it that it's already square. That way, when next time you go for a piece, you're already there. I'm still going to use a long piece, but now I'm going to put that piece off center so that it doesn't 
reach the center of the vise. Right now this looks like a fine setup, not a problem. But the dynamics of what's going on right here, the lead screw is in the middle of this movable jaw. So as the pressure is applied here and resistance is applied out here, the tendency will be for this back jaw to go this way. And when that happens, this part doesn't know which flat surface to register on. It could register in the back or it could register on this side, which is bumped. When that happens, you're going to come up with a part that has a cocked end. No longer parallel to itself. It may be parallel, but it might not be square, or it might be trapezoidal, or who knows what's going to happen. But let me throw a block in there and show you exactly what I'm talking about. See if this works. Now this part rocks back and forth. This is going to represent the possible movement of your movable jaw if your if your vice is not razor sharp, dead tight. Watch what happens. This part is now no longer towards center. It's off center. So as you close it, see the movement? Now it's parallel, right? Part nice and tight. I'm going to snug it. It is snug. It's making great contact right here and along the back. But cutter pressure? Oh, it just moved. I didn't touch the tension on this vise, but now this part is registered against the cocked jaw, and you can see when you mill the end of this part, it's not going to be square to the ends that you think it's square to. Proof positive. Two possible points of registration with a worn out jaw. How do you overcome that? Well, you overcome that by using a piece of equal size on the opposite end. And if you're using a stop, well then use your stop. Let's put it on. Once you've milled your first part, put that good part on this end and then move on with the rest of your parts. Same possible movable nasty jaw. As it comes closed, it's going to find its home because it's got pressure on both sides. Keep this in mind, guys. This is, this is machining 101. This is as basic as turning the machine on. When you set something up, if you're going to use small pieces on one side of the vise, Put a small piece on the other side of the same size so that you don't get that movement and you don't have any problems. That is the gist of this video. Support both sides. If you want to take a piece and put a screw in it, a flathead screw, and use that. Adjustment right here to make up for the size of whatever if you don't have extra material. Get creative. Maybe even, who knows, get creative. But put that second piece on the other end. And if you don't do it, don't well, stop making videos using just one side because that's a bad idea for people that don't know the difference. Thank you very much for hanging in. I hope this wasn't too long-winded. This is very important, very important. Make sure that this is part of your everyday setup. Right there. Thank you for hanging in. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, wishing you well wherever you are in the world. Hope you're well, happy, and safe. All the above. Me, I'm out. If you've been waiting for the announcement that the rotary table alignment pins are back in stock, well, here's proof positive they are back in stock, ready to ship. You've been waiting on them back in the store? Here they are. Hit the website. Available in four different sizes, guys. 3 8 shank, half-inch shank, 10-millimeter shank, which I have to handle with gloves, and the standard three-quarter, which you're looking at right here. Get them while you can.